Yo, it's Guido coming at you with the Tactics Talk. Welcome back. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you guys have a good day. Today we have Love and Retirement 5454 from my clan. GFLC is in his T78 Premium Tier 6 American, sort of a Hellcat kind of esque thing at Tier 6. Six, six. We are on Mura Himmelsdorf. Himmelsvaka. <clears throat> oh my goodness. <coughs> All tier six, nope, tier six and five. There are three artillery. He's in an open top TD. He probably wants to avoid getting hit by artillery. I thought this would be a good one to look at because he sent me this and said, hey, can you take a look and see if there are any mistakes I made, if there was a way I could make this better. He's going to end up having actually a pretty good game, but he doesn't do it the way I would do it, so it's wrong. <laughs> does get spotted by the MT-25. I think if I was hurrying up to get to this camping spot, I would have faded maybe a little bit further away. However, who knew a MT-25 would come screaming in? And it looks like Love and Retirement decides to not engage the MT-25 and is more interested in getting into the bushes and hidden away so the Artie doesn't nuke him. So probably not a bad idea. I think maybe you had a shot on that guy and there were enough people lit. You were one of the earliest, maybe hide behind the building and take shots as he goes by. So I think I would have stopped to engage him right there. Back to the part where I said he doesn't do it the way I do it. I would be down in the forest. Of course, there's only a Cavalier in the forest, so I'd probably have gone there and hopefully run away pretty quickly. But as I said, Love and Retirement has a different plan. This is Encounter, so this is not a bad spot. It's a pretty typical TD spot. If you're going to push over towards the cap from the north spawn, then you're going to expect to be shot at by TDs or people potentially even heavies on this particular map because that's not really a long shot is it it's more like 150 meters 200 meter shot immediately we have a bunch of heavies headed right for the cap and we take that shot i think it would have backed out and made that bush dark good news is at this tier heavies are bad as far as vision range vision distances go and crews can tend to be bad as well here comes a kv1 so we're going to shoot him then we auto aim. You rely on auto aim quite a bit. I don't do that as much, but it's working out for you. You're going to get a shot there. And the KV-1 moves in. Nicely done. Move back and we unlock. And now what the heck's going on? The KV-2 rages in. Do we have a shot on the HT number six? I think if you moved forward enough to make the bushes see through, you might have been able to get a little better view of what the heck is going on up there. But not bad. We take another shot. Looks like that one probably went into the ground because we're only seeing a little bit of the tank. That's where auto aim becomes a problem. I think as you well know, you auto aim at center of mass, it may actually be shooting right at the ground. The pipper might be right on the ground. This poor HT number six is getting absolutely clobbered. and He's down to his last 64 or so hit points. Again, back to the part, it's not the way I would do it. You can see over on the east side, they're having a huge problem over there. That is not going well on that side. You would have to be running away already. Nice job tearing up the guys that were jumping on the cap. Now, it's mid-tier. People are going to jump on the cap. If you had been sitting here this whole time and they were only peeking a little bit or not pushing, you guys would be in a bit more trouble because their forest would have won and now they would have had a bunch of guys coming out of the forest and their guys on the cap would have been hanging out. But they pushed in and died, so fantastic. What I also like about it is that Love and Retirement is going to work to get his gun in the game so he went to that position it is a lucrative position if the enemy team does what it did and it did it's a mobile TD so now he's going somewhere else let's say nobody had showed up at the cap he may have had to reposition any way to come over this way but it's nice thinking because he's paying attention to what's going on and he knows that there's a line of bushes you can even fall back a couple times as you're sitting over here we're gonna engage the T-34 next and we just have a bunch. We have a Cavalier, a Pudel, a T-34. A couple other guys show up. I think the lead fire could have been a little better on that one. We auto aim. That takes away all the uh, hand motion part. We know we've got it locked in. It's maybe not so good when they're moving. He's going to unlock and try to put a little shot that just goes high. That was actually not a bad shot overall. Well aimed as far as where he thought he was going to be. I think... For me, I might have, might have bailed out further out of this position, maybe tried to get behind this next bush. It doesn't end up hurting you because I'm not really sure how this happens, but the Cavalier is double bushed maybe when you fire. You don't even get spotted. So very nice. Maybe the tree he was going behind, it looked like he was out in the open, but there was a tree right there. So we don't end up getting spotted. Think about knocking down that building right there. You can shoot that. 
it looks like maybe you're thinking the 34 will come out the other side. I'll sometimes just knock that building down to help out with further shots. Guys will try to sneak in behind. And all of a sudden we're sort of losing. We're seven and eight. Things were looking good. What happened is Love and Retirement's team all went up on that hill to get sniping shots and got lit and got shredded by the guys down below coming out of the forest. Then we find the Pudel. Somehow they missed the M44 down there. So the Pudel is out in the open. He is spotted. I'm not really sure by who. Maybe the Ram, possibly the Excelsior. And down he goes. Very nice. Panzer 4H looks like he finds the M44. All right. The Valiant's going to wander around here. I think you probably noticed that. Just pay attention. You maybe needed to investigate it. You're not going to get a shot of Panzer 4 H unless you push down because he's down in the low spot. Looks like maybe you're thinking that, and then all of a sudden we get a 100 show up. We take a shot. And again, that Valiant is out in the open. And unfortunately, we're sort of only one bush here, maybe a tree. Where'd that guy go? There he is. So he's driving around in the open right there. Take a blind shot. Very nice. Like, all right, what's going on here? Let's move forward. We don't see him. Valiant is still out in the open. We finally notice the Valiant. Have a little bit of trouble finding him. That's kind of why I zoom out there, uh, Love and Retirement. We've talked about this a couple times. It's kind of why I zoom out and go, where is he? And then I can get online and zoom in where he is, as opposed to doing the soda straw back and forth. Depending on how good the old eyes are, sometimes you can miss the tank. We're going to auto-aim. Works okay for a Valiant. They're not very fast, so you don't need a whole lot of lead fire. We unlock it because it looks like he's behind some stuff, and we take him down really well done. We're up to 1,966. We knock down a couple trees, a couple three trees. I think the Artie actually takes a poke at you right here. Yep, there you go. So they're paying attention to trees, and they actually shoot right in there. Then we get lit, so now they definitely know where we are. And I don't know, what was that little extra bump right there? That was very strange, unless you had moved or something. That can be an artifact for the replay, too. Sometimes it just does that. Definitely start moving. I would not have even stopped. All three already. One already shot at you. One took a shot at trees going down. Then you got lit. I think another one came in. I Once I killed the Su 100Y, I'd have just headed forward, took a 90 left, and started zigzagging. Why? Because there's no other tanks alive. It's just Arties out there. Now we're just going to run around and try to kill these guys. So we'll speed this thing up to chipmunk speed. Down goes the 13 F3. I like this as well. There's eight minutes. There's no reason to go sit on the cap. Let's just go get some more hit points. We're already at 2,195 with one kill. Very nicely done. So we'll move on in here. This is one of the most likely places for Artie. You can also tell that the RBFM has moved through the other spot. He found one. And then Love and Retirement said, what, what, what? Oh, okay, there we go. There he is. Probably could have stopped and started shooting that guy a little bit earlier. Doesn't matter though because we drop him with 315. That is quite the high roll, isn't it? 315. Oh, HE. Well done. Didn't even notice. A low roll. <laughs> so a pen in a low roll with the HE does 315 to the M44. And we come out of this thing with 2,510 damage, 559 assist, and two kills. <clears throat> Bottom line, there was there's not a whole bunch more, just very little things that you could have done well. I would have gone down to the forest, but I would have been forced to run away pretty quickly on that, and then it would have ended up where you were anyway. If I'd have done that, I probably would have missed all the shots you had on the heavies moving on to the cap. At this tier, that's a pretty good bet that there will be shots right there. And if you are going to go to positions like that, then do what Love and Retirement did when the well goes dry, move and go find more hit points. And that's what he did. So he went there. I don't know what his plan would have been had nobody showed up. Hopefully he would have flexed down to the south, metaflex down to the south as he did. More than likely he would have go and look for the hit points, but that's not what happened. Plenty of heavies walked out into his gun sights right there. We talked a little bit about how maybe we could have worked out a little bit better. Come down to the south then once that well went dry. I thought maybe I'd have gone up in the hill with the other guys, but I liked the move down to the south. The guys on the hill got shredded because there were multiple tanks down in the little village right there and you just absolutely blunted the push that was coming in that's why when you win the east flank guys you don't push either north or south whichever side doesn't matter you don't push to the west just stop it win that flank in the east and go back maybe go to the middle or even go all the way back around and add your gun to the other fight but don't try to push into their backfield because the other side has the same thing where they can set up TDs sitting in bushes and the guys on the hills shredding you as you push in which is what the purple guys ran into, the buzzsaw right there, the buzzsaw called Lovin' 
retirement. So well done, man. That was a good game. Really, the only thing I would have is very small things in there. I just noticed you're running Binox and a and a count at a man after my own heart. I like it. <laughs> I'm sure some people are going to have have a uh, issue with that, but it doesn't matter because that was a good game. That is all I've got for today, guys. Thanks for tuning in. We will see you.